Lecture 10-1 Nyquist Plots Objectives Explain the benefits of using frequency response analysis on a control system. Develop the Nyquist diagram given the Nyquist path using the Cauchy theorem. Apply the Nyquist criterion to determine if a system is stable. And determine the stability of a control system with open loop poles on the imaginary axis. Theory The behavior of a system to incoming frequencies is as important for stability analysis and design as the methods previously discussed. However, it can also be used for frequency-based applications such as radios and low-pass filters. The benefit of frequency analysis is that the frequency response can be obtained from measurements on a physical system without deriving the system transfer function. This is important because sometimes it's difficult to get an accurate plant model or system model. In prior courses, the sinusoidal steady state or frequency response for a system was obtained by using phasor analysis or S equals J omega. The characteristics of the system were also analyzed by using the Bode diagram, a semi-log plot of the magnitude of the transfer function in decibels, and the phase in degrees versus frequency. There are approximation techniques for sketching the Bode diagram as well as deriving a system's transfer function from the Bode diagram. The Bode diagram can be used to find the bandwidth, break frequencies, resonant frequency, DC or high frequency gain of a control system. The benefit of the Bode diagram is you can quickly see the effects of adding a pole or zero to the system. The Nyquist criterion is another method for stability analysis based upon the frequency response. The benefit of the Nyquist criterion over Routh Hurwitz or root locus is that it not only indicates the stability, but provides useful information for the design of compensators. The benefit of Nyquist plots over Bode diagrams is that you can analyze a system with an unstable open loop plant. It is easiest to use Nyquist criterion on physically realizable systems, which require transfer functions, which are proper or strictly proper. Assume the following unity feedback system with closed loop transfer function T of S. T of S is equal to Y of S over R of S or G of S over one plus G of S. Recall that for a closed loop control system to be stable, the poles of the transfer function or roots of the characteristic equation, one plus G of S, must be in the left half of the S plane Similar to the root locus method, the open loop transfer function G of S can be used to determine the stability of the closed loop system. Nyquist criterion is based upon Cauchy's theorem of complex variable theory for mapping contours in the complex S plane to the G of S plane. Let's assume that one plus G of S is equal to S plus Z1 times S plus Z2 and so on, divided by S plus P1 times S plus P2 and so on. Now consider a closed contour gamma, which encloses only a single zero as shown in the following figure. The value of one plus G of S can be evaluated for every point S on the contour gamma. By doing this evaluation, we will create a new set of points that forms a new contour gamma prime. If a zero is enclosed by gamma, then contour gamma prime encircles the origin in the same direction as gamma. If a pole is, is enclosed by gamma, the contour gamma prime encircles the origin in the opposite direction as gamma. The net number of clockwise encirclements of the origin by ga gamma prime in the one plus G of S plane is equal to the difference between the number of zeros in Z and the number of poles in P of one plus G of S encircled in the clockwise direction by gamma. Now let's look at some examples. In class activity one, map the following S-plane Nyquist path to the Nyquist contour or diagram F of S-plane. So we're going to go from the S-plane, which is sigma plus J omega, to the F of S-plane, which is 2S plus one, using a contour that's defined by the points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So first, we have a zero at negative one half. So next we are going to find the contour for the F of S plane. So here's our imaginary axis, J omega. 
and our real axis, which is sigma. So for A, that was at one plus J, we have two times one plus J plus one, which is three plus J two. And for B, that was at one, F of S is a three. And for C, that was at one minus J, two times one minus J plus one is three minus J two in F of S. And for D, which is at negative J, we're going to have one minus J two for F of S. E is negative one minus J, so F of S is negative one minus J two. F is negative one and F of S is negative one. G is negative one plus J and F of S is negative one plus J two. H is J and F of S is one plus J two. And so next we are going to plot these values on our coordinate plane. And so here we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. The Nyquist path has a clockwise encirclement of the zero, and notice that in the F of S plane, the Nyquist contour has a clockwise encirclement of the origin. Let's try another example. In class activity two, map the following S-plane Nyquist path to the Nyquist contour or diagram, where we're going to have S equals sigma plus J omega, and F of S is S plus two over two S plus one. F of S, has a zero at negative two and a pole at negative one half. So the Nyquist path has a clockwise encirclement of the pole only. So if A is one plus J, F of S is 0 0.84 minus J 0 0.23. If B is one, F of S is one. If C is one minus J, F of S is 0 0.84 plus J 0 0.23. If D is negative J, F of S is 0 0.8 plus J 0 0.6. If E is negative one minus J, F of S is 0 0.2 plus J 0 0.6. If F is negative one, F of S is negative one. If G is negative one plus J, F of S is 0 0.2 minus J 0 0.6. And if H is J, F of S is 0 0.8 minus j 0 0.6. So now we create our f of s plane by making the real axis sigma and the imaginary axis j omega. And we plot these values on our coordinate plane. So here we have a at 0 0.84 minus j 0 0.23. B at one, C at 0 0.84 plus J 0 0.23. D at 0 0.8 plus J 0 0.6. E at 0 0.2 plus J 0 0.6. F at negative one, G at 0 0.2 minus J 0 0.6, and H at 0 0.8 minus J 0 0.6. We then connect the dots. And note here that we have a counterclockwise encirclement of the origin because we had a clockwise encirclement of the pole in the path. Example one, if G of S is equal to S plus two, create the contour gamma, which is a circle centered at negative two with a radius of one half, and then evaluate one plus G of S to create gamma prime. So we see that we have one zero at negative two so on our S plane, we're going to label negative one and negative two. 
and we're going to label our zero. And then we are going to create our Nyquist path, gamma, that is going to circle our zero. And we're going to make this a counterclockwise encirclement. So then in our f of s plane, we're going to have one plus g of s. And so here we label positive one half, the origin zero, j one half, And what we see here is that our Nyquist diagram is also a counterclockwise circle with a radius of one half, which we call gamma prime, and it circles the origin. Example two, if g of s is equal to one over s plus two, create the contour gamma, which is a circle centered at negative two with a radius of one half, and then evaluate one plus g of s to create gamma prime. So here we see that we have a pole at negative two. So our Nyquist path is going to be a circle with a radius of one half that encircles this pole. And this one will also be a counterclockwise encirclement of the pole. So then for one plus g of s, the four points labeled on the circle become negative 1.5, negative two, three, and two. They have been color coded so that you can track them. So you see negative two, 0 0.5 on the s plane became one negative two in the f of s plane. So when we connect those dots, whereas we had a counterclockwise encirclement of the pole in the s plane, in the f of s plane, we have a clockwise encirclement of the origin.